Hello my dear friends, you're on the military summary channel and today we're going to discuss the beginning of the Ukrainians' greatest counter-offensive operation. Today is the 11th of May of 2023, they've launched few attacks yesterday in the evening of the local time and today we see a real offensive operation and not just in the vicinity of Bakhmut. The sources are saying that uh, we can Today, currently, we can see the convoys and columns of Ukrainian forces who are heading from Kharkiv in direction of Belgorod region of Russian Federation and also in direction of Kupinsk area. Today, we see a number of attacks, uh, a number of attempts to encircle the Wagners in Bakhmut. Today, we see uh, activity and activation of Ukrainian forces in Arecho front line. So let's go step by step and let's try to understand what exactly is happening today. And first of all, we're going to start with Bakhmut, with this area. If you remember, yesterday the Ukrainians launched their first counter-offensive attacks in direction of the channel, and as a result of those attacks, the Russians were forced to step back from this bridgehead on the eastern side of the channel. During the day, we uh, received a lot of updates exactly from this uh, bridgehead, from this foothold. And if you remember, yesterday we discussed that there is one very high risk by losing the, of this bridge hat is that the Russian forces who are currently located in the salient on the, on the north on this forest could appear in small, like let's say, operational encirclement and that Ukrainians will try to use this situation trying to push the Russians or maybe even to encircle the Russian forces in this small salient and this is exactly what the Ukrainians did during the day and as a result of those attacks the Russians were forced to step back from the M32 road to the south and there were no updates but about the real positions of the Russians in this area but some sources are saying that currently the Russians control this area so we can see that the passage between the western side and the eastern side of channel is under Russian control. I don't think that the Russians are able to hold this bridgehead for a very long time because the Ukrainians are going to increase the pressure and anyway currently they're just trying to win some time because as we know uh, today the Russian Minister of Defense of Russian Federation took a decision to replace the LPR forces from Klishevka and replace them with Wagner forces. So they need time, at least a few hours, when they will be redeployed in this direction and to establish their positions. So currently the forces on, along the channel, Russian forces, are trying to win the time. And I expect that within the next 48 hours the Russians will establish their bridgehead uh, some along this, let's say, let's say on the uh, south of this line. So in Klishevka and the fortifications on the south of Klishevka. If you remember, if you take a look at Klishevka, there is a very powerful trenches, very powerful fortification that used to be under Ukraine control. And currently this area is on the Wagner's and they will try to hold and to stop the Ukrainians exactly in Klishevka. So I expect one more time that within the next 48 hours, the Russians will leave the entire bridgehead on the right side of this arrow. And with uh, so that means that within the next 48 hours, the Ukrainians will be able to capture the forest and, let's say, release and restore the access to M32 road and restore the supply support of Ukrainian forces in the western part of Bakhmut. We will return back to Bakhmut a little bit later. So this about this is the situation about the Battle of Klishevka. Right before we start making this video, um, uh, the Russian sources uh, started reporting that Ukrainians launched another offensive operation in the south and currently they are trying to attack in direction of Makievka. This not Makievka, but in direction of Mayorsk, this small railroad station. So uh, this is some kind of pin uh, freezing operation. And if you remember, this territory used to be under um, the Ukrainian control. And currently, the Ukrainians are trying to restore access to this railroad station and to this road. And let's say with this attack, they're trying to bypass the channel from the south. And if the Ukrainians are able to establish control over this railroad station, Mayorsk, this one, then the Ukrainians will be able to start moving along the uh, along the channel, along the road and along the railroad station to the north and to attack the Russians right in their back, those forces who are currently located in Klishevka and in fortification area of Klishevka. So this is a very dangerous attack, but for now there were no updates about any progress from the Ukrainian side, so let's stay tuned and we will keep this situation. We'll try to follow this. Another important update is coming from the northern flank of Bakhmut and today the Ukrainians launched also a few waves of counter-offensive operation along the railroad ways. First one from Bogdanovka in direction of Berkhovsky water reservoir and another one on the south of railroad ways along the 0506 road in direction of Yehidne. 
Uh, the Russian sources are saying that Ukrainians managed to achieve some success, they managed to develop, they managed to penetrate the, Ukrainians, the Russians' defense orders, and the Russians were forced to step back. And according to information we have, currently the Russians control something like this. So, as you can see, the Russians left the trenches in open air positions and moved in direction of the forest lines and they hidden closer to the fortifications, to the forest lines, to the railroad station and closer to position where there is a very uh, small bridgehead to attack for the Ukrainian side. So it's better, easy to control. For example, uh, this bridgehead on the south of Birkovska water reservoir is not very difficult to protect, to defend. There is like water reserve on the north and railroad ways on the south. So it's a very, very short distance to attack. And of course, of course, if Ukrainians have endless sources, manpower, anyway, they will penetrate, but with, um, with the higher price for this bridgehead. Now we are going to the north. We haven't received any updates about from Areho Vasilivka, Dubo Vasilivka, Zelizyanska from this bridgehead. But based on the patterns and based on the situation around Bakhmut, I assume and my projection and my understanding of the situation that the Russians will be forced to step back on the line of Dubo Vasilivka, Krasnagra, Blagodatne. And the Ukrainians will be able to take this entire bridgehead. Uh, also, the same reasons the Russians, according to the patterns we saw the previous year during the Ukrainian counteroffensive operation, according to the patterns that the Russians shown us on the south of Bakhmut, they will step back. They are not going to fight for these open air positions uh, because uh, the one of the patterns that the Russians used in the previous and they're currently using in Bakhmut is that if you have um, like option to choose between the bridge hat and the manpower usually and in the previous examples the Russians shown us that they're using they were using the manpower so they don't care about bridge hat so I expect that they will step back in direction of Birkovka, Krasnagra, Paraskovka and they will try to meet the Ukrainians on this defense line furthermore the Russian uh, press uh, reporter Evgeny Podubny uh, reported also right before I start making this video that Ukrainians made a small penetration using the armored fields feast in the vicinity of Solidar and they managed to break through this area and to establish their position and currently these forces are trying to prepare their bridgehead before the second the third waves of Ukrainian soldiers arrives to this position after that they will try to continue to attack in direction of Solidar when talking about the area between Sakavancetti, Krasnopopovka, Yakovlevka, Bilogorovka, we haven't received any updates from this area, but to tell the truth, if you ask me, I expect it, and that I understand from my experience that this is one of the most uh, important and one of the most dangerous uh, bridgehead on the Russian front line that they need to keep an eye, eye on it because uh, these, um, these small salient is very perfect uh, area to start, let's say, offensive operation from the Ukrainian side in direction of M32 road. And if the Ukrainians are able to develop even at least, let's say, on 10 kilometers to the south, then they will be able to establish fire control over N32 roads. And this is going to be something like small operational encirclement of Russian forces on the Bakhmut bridgehead. And they will be able to cut Bakhmut with Papasna and cut ba Bakhmut from Papasna. And this is the main supply road that the Russians use for supporting their forces in this area. So they need to pay attention. And I expect that within the next 48 or 24 hours, the Ukrainians will make another attempt or the first attempt to penetrate this area and to get as, as deep as possible in this in direction of N32 road. Uh, furthermore, uh, the previous week we were talking a lot about special unit Ahmad. We were saying whether this force will be deployed or not. And uh, for example, if you remember, uh, to, to yesterday there was like that, like a final day, like mm, like uh, when Wagner's should have left uh, Bakhmut, but they haven't done this yet. And if you remember, we uh, there was a lot of talks that this forces Wagner unit will be replaced by special unit Ahmad. And today the Russian sources published a lot of video of sending more units uh, of Chechen special forces Ahmad and from Razgvardia in direction of Bakhmut. Probably this video was published exactly the same day when the Ukraine slander counteroffensive operation just to sh just to reduce the media panic and to show that the Russians see everything, understand everything, and send uh, exa exactly 
as much as possible reserve they have. Furthermore, uh, if you remember, uh, Prigozhin told us that uh, if the situation is not going to be changed by the by the 10th of May, he would leave Bakhmut. So probably, as I understand, uh, this date was selected um, with a purpose, and we understand that the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation and Prigozhin know exactly that the Ukrainians are going to launch their counteroffensive on the 10th of May, and Prigozhin was asking. Uh, to increase the supply and support of uh, Wagner's with ammo for artillery systems because he knew exactly that the Ukrainians would attack and he just wanted to be secured and he just wanted to be on the safe side. So as you see the situation on the flanks is not very good for the Russians. Uh, this situation is difficult but uh, there, mm, but currently we are not we are not seeing the situation as we saw in Kherson in Kharkov when the Ukrainians were running from Balaklie and so on. Currently the situation is critical but completely controllable under Russian control. Of course the situation could be changed within the next few days, but today uh, there is nothing critical have nothing critical have happened. Now let's talk about Bakhmut and the situation of Bakhmut. Bakhmut. So this is the only area where we can find some good piece of news, good updates. Uh, as we may, uh, probably most of you have already seen the video about the splitting and classification of the fortifications in this area. And if you remember this, the western part of Bakhmut can be split into four into four parts. Uh, this part that is under Russian control has the uh, this fortification has the title of the horse, and currently this area is under Russian control. The area that that currently the Russians are trying to encircle from the north and from the south is called as a nest and today Prigozhin reported that the Russians managed to enter this fortification. Uh, this fortification has the title of uh, a constructor and this area is under complete Ukrainian control and the south one this area has the name of Domino. So these three fortifications and four fortifications one of them is captured by the Russians there's a fierce fighting for the nest fortification and two of them are still remains under Ukrainian control and probably the Ukrainians are going to hold this area for a very long time because I expect that if the Ukrainians are able to unblock N32 road the Ukrainians will start sending more reserves and more reinforcements to the western part of Bakhmut and we're going to see completely different war and battle inside of this town now let's go to the other front lines and let's start from the north because right before we start making this video the Ukrainian sources published a lot of convoys, the Russian sources published a lot of information of Ukrainian convoys who were heading in direction of Belgrade region and in direction of Kupinsk area and uh, the Russian sources are saying that they also have mentioned the new, um, new Western weapon, Western tanks, strikers like Challengers, Leopards. They haven't mentioned the real uh, titles and types of weapon, but they mentioned that these forces who are currently located in Kharkiv uh, have um, and that are currently operating uh, in this area have the types of Western weapon. There are, there, we haven't received any updates about any clashes or any attacks, but, but we understand that Ukrainians are moving their forces to the combat line so we can also expect that within the next 40, 48 hours the Ukrainians can make another attempt to attack the, maybe even the territory of Russian Federation. Let's follow this and let's see. Uh, another interesting updates are coming from Avdiyevka. Uh, the Western source map has been updated and the Russians are saying that currently they started some kind of storming of the block number 9 in, in this area of Avdiyevka. The Russians managed to maintain the bridgehead and to reduce the gray zone between the bridgehead in the north of Opotna and Vadiana and this block and currently also probably within the next 48 hours the Russians will make an also an attempt to uh, encircle and to enter Avdiyevka and to start the storming process inside of this town. And another interesting updates are coming of course uh, from Solidar as you can see yes just before just during this uh, during this video we see that uh, that uh, Ukrainians the thing that I, I, I explained to you during the video about this attack on the northern flank has uh, started while we I was making this video and the Russian sources are saying that there is a very like some kind of activation on the Solidar front line and the Russian Ukrainian started pushing in this area as well so everything develops even faster than I thought and when talking about Zaporozhye as you can see this entire area is covered with the fire uh, there, there are still just artillery duels there are no clashes combats on the ground the Ukrainians are not in, are not hurried to push 
but we also can expect that within the next few hours the, the Ukrainians will, will activate in this area. The Russians are saying that the level of loss of the Ukrainians during the previous 20 hours have been increased. The Ukrainians lost 110 soldiers, so this is the heaviest loss of the Ukrainians in this area and probably they have already moved all their forces to the combat line and we can expect another activation in this area as well. When talking about Kherson, there are no changes on the ground. There are no like uh, just a regular artillery duels without something interesting or something new or something like this. So uh, and this is like all about like like detailed description. And now we need to go one by one one more time and just to analyze and understand. During the day we seen and mentioned and we uh, where there was reports about activation of Ukrainians in the vicinity of Kharkiv. And there are probably two directions of attack, one of them from Kharkiv in direction of Belgorod, and another columns and, co of, and convoys of forces were heading in direction of Kupinsk. So probably the Ukrainians are going to relaunch their offensive operation in this area as well. There were no updates from uh, from Liman frontline, neither from the from the Russian uh, side, from the Russian side, or, nor from the Ukrainian. So probably we are not going to see anything in this area. Right before we uh, start creating this video, the Russians report about some act kind of activation of clashes from Siversk to Solidar direction. During the day, we received a lot of updates about the clashes on the flanks of Bakhmut, where the Russians were forced to step back. The only area where the Russians had some progress is inside of Bakhmut. They have entered some certain fortifications. Also, right before we start making this video, the Ukrainians launched some wave of attack in direction of railroad station Mayorsk to restore access to the road that they can use to encircle the, Ukraine, the Russian forces in Bakhmut and in the south fortification area. The Russians achieved significant success in the vicinity of Avdiivka and currently they got as close as possible to the industrial zone, to the residential area and fortification area, and we can also expect some expect some offensive within the next 24 hours. The sources are saying about heaviest clashes in Marinka. Uh, currently it's very difficult to understand the word exactly um, the Russians, uh, but also um, when talking about Marinka, the Russian sources are saying that uh, the Ukrainians have been activated in this area on the same line and the same like level as on the Solidar front line and uh, on Mayorsk front line. So also the Ukrainians launched a small counter-offensive operation in Marinka as well, trying to regain their lost positions during the previous months of clashes. Also very interesting. So we'll see, but probably this is the operation where the Ukrainians are trying to, let's say, to to force the Russians to misfocus them, to change their focus and not, because all these attacks are very important, but we still don't know where the Ukrainians are, which direction the Ukrainians have already chosen as the main direction. Of course, probably this is going to be the south, but there are still no clashes, but most of the Russians' military experts are saying that soon something is going to happen here as well. And that's it for today. Military Summary Channel reminds you to condemn any violence in Ukraine. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes to my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye bye.